Wonderful. Thanks so much. All right. So we're going to start with the resume portion and then we'll move on to the cover letter portion. As I said, if you guys have any questions throughout, please feel free to unmute yourselves and have a chat or you can um, pop your questions in the chat box as well. I will do my best to keep an eye on it. Um, thanks, Kern. I've seen that and now as well. Um, I'll do my best to keep an eye on the chat box. But yeah, well, I will leave some time at the end for, for questions as well. So um, let's kick off. So um, there is no, you know, one size fits all for for resumes and cover letters. Everybody has unique circumstances, unique experience, um, unique goals. So what I want to do is go through an overview of what a strong or high quality resume looks like right now. Um, and then, you know, um, we can um, answer any specific questions you might have towards um, towards the end of the session or throughout. So feel free to jump in with any questions, okay? So I'm going to kick off now. Um, we're going to just talk about what the point of a resume, the purpose of a resume is. We'll go through some of the basics of formatting and design. Um, we'll talk through the different sections and what the content should be in those different sections. Um, and then we'll talk about how to tweak and tailor for different types of roles. I know some of you guys are looking at a range of roles as well. So we want to make sure that we're, um, tailoring your documents for the different types of roles. Um, so, you know, traditionally, we think of a resume as like a um, quite a simple um, factual document. You know, it's got qualifications, here's my job titles, here's the responsibilities I've held. Um, <clears throat> this stage, you know, recruitment processes change over time, the job market changes, we're in a pretty fast paced world, um, especially if you're in a metro area, you know, it can be quite competitive kind of market. So what your resume should be right now is actually more like a marketing brochure, I call it, you know, a pers your personal marketing brochure, you're selling your value to an employer, here's the value that I can bring to your company. So you know, if you think about it, um, especially if you're applying for roles online or you're applying for a job where the employer doesn't know you, doesn't know of you, it's not a referral, um, the, it's your resume and cover letter are the only thing between you and the role, the only thing between you and the employer. Um, it's the only reference point they have of who you are. So investing the time and effort into making these documents really strong makes a huge difference to the opportunities that you find come your way. So um, that's why I do these workshops because it really makes a big difference to getting the opportunities that you deserve, but also um, the opportunities that you want, you know, that we align, you align your documents with your target, with your goal. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we cover off on your experience, your qualifications, your skills, on your attributes as well. So by attributes, I mean your personality, basically, your character. Um, you know, employers are interested in who you are more and more, not just your experience and, the, and your past job titles, but they want to know that you will fit within the team, you will fit within the culture, you're going to get along with everybody, it's the right environment for you. So we want to demonstrate your character as well in your documents. So all these different elements combined um, form what I call your unique value proposition. This is a marketing term, but it's basically what your value is to the employer and what's unique about that, you know, because that's what's going to um, distinguish you from the other candidates. So we want to combine all these elements to show your unique value. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about here is not just how to put together any old resume. It's about how to put together a really strong resume. Um, so, you know, I'm like pushing things upwards a little bit here for you guys because it really, really makes a huge difference. And it makes a huge difference to your own confidence as well. When you see your profile laid out strongly, it gives you um, the language to use in interviews, it gives you the confidence in yourself, you're able to articulate your skills. Um, <clears throat> so some of the key elements of a really strong resume, I've got my, you know, top five elements here. We want clean and crisp formatting. 
you know, there's no need for fancy colours and fancy graphics and images and things like that. That's not only for, um, you know, the software systems that are used in recruitment sometimes, they're called ATS, but also for the person reading it. Um, if you look at it from the perspective of um, a hiring manager or a recruiter, they could be scanning through, you know, 50 to 200 resumes, depending on, on the type of role um, in the industry. So what they're doing is scanning. They're not reading every word generally um, at, in the first stage. So your resume should be quite digestible and easily scanned. Um, so we want to keep the formatting very clean, very simple, very crisp. Um, a, a punchy, the third element is a punchy, powerful value proposition. And this is fancy wording, but it's basically the summary that's at the top of your resume. We want it to be really attractive because it's the first thing that the eyes are going to go to. So we want to make sure that it's pulling the reader in to keep exploring your resume. And we'll talk about what goes into that summary um, a little bit further down. The fourth element is highlights outcomes and achievements from your career and your experience. So having a well-written resume with your responsibilities in there is one thing, and that's okay. But if you can brainstorm um, and and include in there, you know, the standout moments from your career, the unique contributions that you've made, you know, achievements, highlights, um, this just takes your resume to a whole nother level. And not many people do this. So if you do this, it's really going to make you stand out. And we'll talk about what goes into those as well a bit further down the track. Um, <clears throat> And the fifth element is, as I was saying before, is tailoring your document to the different types of roles um, that you apply to, um, which generally people don't like to hear this from me because it means that you need to do a little bit of work um, for, for each application that you put in. But if you can get your, you know, your master resume together and get a really strong kind of base, tweaking it and tailoring it for different roles becomes really, really simple. Um, it's not, not a difficult process at all. Um, so we'll talk about some of the basics of the design, you know, the look of a resume, which I always say is not the priority. It's not about it being really fancy and colours and things like that. It's about making it really easy on the eyes for the reader, basically. So I've just put a couple of examples here of what a um, strong resume looks like, you know, so quite simple, straightforward um, you know, um, basic um, formatting, text-based formatting. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we don't need to use too many colours. We don't want graphics and tables and images. Um, I've put this in here just in terms of contact details. You don't need to put a full address in anymore. You know, just your number, your email address, your location. If you have a LinkedIn profile, you can stick that in there as well. Um, <clears throat> Generally, two to three pages um, length for a resume. Um, this will vary, again, on a case-by-case -case basis, but I really hesitate to, to go beyond three pages. Um, if you're going to put your entire um, career path down, you'll end up with a 20-page resume, which nobody's going to read. So we want to keep it very concise. Um, in terms of font, we use standard, you know, size 10 to 12 font and a standard font, you know, like Times New Roman or Calibri. Um, again, just to make it easy on the eyes. We don't want to get too fancy with that. Um, <clears throat> we want to keep, you know, a minimum of three font sizes throughout. So keep it quite consistent, you know, consistent spacing, consistent borders, consistent text alignment, um, and a little bit of bolding and underlining some important areas is really effective for that scanning process. Um, but we want to use that sparingly as well. You know, the more you start bolding things, the less effective it's going to be. So just tactful use of bolding and underlining. <clears throat> so that's just, you know, the basics of the formatting. I've stuck in here, so you guys are going to get these slides afterwards, just some links of where you can find some templates. You know, don't try to build one from scratch. There are heaps out there. Um, these three links that I've put in are resume builders, where you input your information and it spits out the resume for you. Um, but I honestly recommend using Microsoft Word templates. There are heaps of resume templates in there. And if you search ATS resume, this is ATS is the software system that I was referring to. 
you get those simple, clean and crisp um, templates. Um, so in terms of the look, keeping it simple, keeping it straightforward. Um, <clears throat> all right. So we're going to start looking at the actual content. Um, I'm going to go through starting with page one, which is the most important page of the resume. Um, we'll talk about the different sections and then we'll jump down to experience. So we're going to focus on page one, the experience section, and then we'll brush over those other little bits and pieces um, that are of a bit lesser priority, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> so just basics, starting with the header, as I said before, your name, your number, your email address, suburb, state and postcode is more than sufficient. You don't need to put your full address. Um, as I said, if you have a LinkedIn profile, you might want to link in there. This target title um, is an optional thing. So, for example, if you are looking at an admin role and you have a heap of administration experience, you might want to label yourself there as a administration professional, administrative professional or administrative specialist if you feel that's, that's more appropriate. Um, if it's relevant to the role that you're applying for. So what this does is when the recruiter or hiring manager is scanning, you're instantly profiling yourself for that position. So they look at it and go, oh, she's an admin person. She's relevant already, so I'm going to keep reading. Um, if you're applying for a role that you don't have any experience in or any relevant experience in, you may want to exclude this target title. Um, but yeah, as I said, if you do have experience in the, the type of role that you're applying for, this is a really great element to put into your resume to just make sure that you get a look at. Um, so that's the, the header there. Um, this is a bit of a, a brainstorming exercise um, that will basically form the foundations of, of page one for your resume. So if you guys want to take a couple of minutes here and, and do a little bit of this brainstorming with me, it can help to kind of start things off for you. Or if you want to do it um, after, after we've gone through the workshop, that's okay as well. So your career in a nutshell, this is for the summary that goes at the top of your resume um, and also can be used at the beginning of your cover letter too. So have a think about how many years of experience you have in total. Jot that number down. Um, have a think about the different industries that you have worked in and drop those down and the different types of roles that you've worked in. So if you've been in customer service and admin, aged care, whatever it is, drop those down as well. Um, <clears throat> so this is for, as I said, for the summary at the top of the resume. So again, looking at it from the recruiter or employer's perspective, when they start to scan through those resumes, they are going in blindly. They don't know anything about you. They don't have any information about you. So we want that one or two line summary right at the top that basically gives an overview of your entire career history in one sentence or two sentences. Um, so it gives them an instant picture of, of your background. Otherwise, they're having to work for it and work it out for themselves. Um, so that's what that little, your career in a nutshell is for. Um, <clears throat> Having a look now at, I've called this your capability profile. This is basically your skill set. So this is something that's really, really important for page one of your resume. As I said, you know, it's a scanning process at first. We want to basically spoon feed the information to the person looking at your resume. We don't want them to have to go through your experience to find your skills. We want to lay it out for them. Here are my skills right in front of you, plain and clear. Um, <clears throat> so this little brainstorming exercise is for that purpose. So we want to think about three areas, your soft skills, hard skills, and your attributes or your personality. Um, so I've put a bit of an example here for you just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So this is just a hypothetical client, you know, 10 years of experience working across a couple of industries, and these are the different types of roles. When we go to skills, so soft skills are the skills that can basically apply in any job. You know, so things like communication, being organised, um, your, your positive approach, um, 
planning and scheduling um on a you know being a people person um your manner is professional your you know phone etiquette will basically apply across every job so these kind of softer skills that are not so specific to a certain type of job um, are really important to bring out as well. Um, your hard skills are those skills that are more specific. Um, so, you know, um, there was um, somebody in the chat who was looking at IT roles. So this is where you would look, talk about your technical skills, um, you know, the different systems or different platforms or different softwares um, that you have skills in. Um, if you're in, say, a customer service role, maybe it's um, the, the software systems that you use, maybe it's invoicing processes, um, things that are a little bit more specific to, to that type of job. Um, and then the third element is your natural attributes, your character. What do you like? What do people say about you? You know, what do your friends and family think, think that you're like? What do your peers think that you're like? Are you, you know, a really persistent person? You're going to continue on and find a solution no matter what. Are you really loyal? Um, are you really committed? Are you really good with people? You can talk to anybody, you know. Um, and these can cross over a little bit as well. Um, they can cross over with your soft skills um, as well, but really important to highlight and that becomes quite uh, more relevant for the cover letter as well. So these are the things that are really good to think about and jot down before you start producing your resume. Does anyone have any questions on that so far? Can I just no? um can I just add a, a thing there, Salam? Um, I don't want anybody to get too um, anxious about doing the resume because I will be here to help you and give you support. But this is really good for you to know what you, what you need to be doing. Thanks. Beautiful. No worries. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, I don't. I don't want to put pressure on anyone either. And guys, there is a heap of you know, Google is your friend, and Sharon is your friend. So there is a lot of a lot of help and resources out there as well. Um. <clears throat> all right. So going in and looking at this summary, um, that goes at the top of your resume. So we want, you know, about four to eight lines um, of an overview of your profile. So again, traditionally, usually what we do in this summary is say, oh, I'm looking for this or I'm looking for that. This is the type of job I want. This is what I want to do. What we want, what we really should be doing is shifting the focus to the employer. So we want to talk about what we have to offer. Um, that's the goal here. You're summarizing what you can offer the employer. Um, so we start with talking about your career in a nutshell, you know, which is that first column that we did. So a, a one-line summary, I have this many years of experience across these different roles or these different industries. Um, then we go into summarising the skills that we brainstormed. You know, these are my key skills. These are the key things that I have to offer. Um, and then if you would like, um, especially if you're not submitting a cover letter, you can put a very brief objective of this is what I'm looking for. Um, <clears throat> so I've just put another example here um, of a value proposition. So four to eight lines of a quick summary, your career in a nutshell, um, your key skills and um, a, a brief objective of what you're looking for or why you've applied for the role. Um, just check, jumping in on the chat. <clears throat> Um, oh, Sharon's replied there. That's all good. Okay, wonderful. All right, so let's have a look at the skills, the skills area. Um, so there's a, there's so many different ways that you can present your skills. Um, I'll I'll go through um a couple of the different ways that you can show your skills on page one. Okay, so we've got here. This is kind of a a simple way to do it. A keywords list. So once you, you know, brainstorm those skills, um, you want to pick out nine, maybe 12, nine to 12 items and just list those keywords and phrases on page one. So again, when the person looks at it, they can very clearly see what your skill set is. They don't have to dig for it. They don't have to work for it. Um, 
if you have a lot of experience and um, you feel like you can categorize it, you can put those skills into, into a few different categories. Um, and if you're looking at, you know, a little bit higher level, if you feel like you have areas of expertise, you feel like you have areas of specialty, um, then you can pick out three to five of those and, and, and describe them a little bit. So, um, and then the third section of that page one is just a summary of, of your job, of your jobs. So your career structure or career overview. So just your job titles, company names and dates um, on page one. So what we end up with here is a very strong overview of your profile. And often this can be enough to, to get that, um, that interview call. So we wanna, as I said, spoon feed that information to the person, not make them have to look for it. So a recruiter can look at this and say, oh, yep, okay, I've read page one. She's got 14 years of experience. Oh, there's her skill set. Yep, I like it. These are the different jobs she's held. These is how many years of experience she's got down here. I can see she's stayed in a couple of jobs for several years or whatever it may be. Um, so it gives them a very good overall picture of who you are and what you're offering. Okay. Just checking the chat box here. All right. So... <clears throat> I'm going to jump in now to page two and talk a little bit about experience and how to put your experience in there. Um, so talking about a responsibilities-based resume, which can be very strong as well. It doesn't have to be based around highlights or achievements or things like that. Um, a responsibilities resume is can be quite strong as well. Um, so we want to focus on basically, I say, five to eight bullet points Five is more than sufficient. If you feel like there is more that you need to put in there, you can, you know, up to eight is okay. We want to limit each bullet point to about one to two lines. Um, we want to start each bullet point with like an, an active word, not just saying, you know, admin and, and, and invoicing, performed admin and invoicing or coordinated events or whatever it may be. So I will give you a whole list of these starting words for the bullet points as well. Um, and something that's really good to include here, which a lot of people tend to miss, is a bit of um, information around who you worked with. Um, you know, how big was the team? Um, who were the different people that you spoke to on the phone, the different stakeholders, the different parties? Who were you liaising with? Who did you report to? Who was your boss? Um, so these these little elements are people miss that a lot and it really gives a full picture of of your experience it doesn't it's not so isolated because companies want to know that you can work within a team you can interact with different people at different levels of an organization and and people who have different functions in in the in the company as well um <clears throat> so is there a rule, just a question, is there a rule that experience from over 10 years ago is not relevant? I did a 10-year stint at Westpac before I moved into film in 2012. Um, there, it's, not a, it's not a dead set rule, you know, it's not, a, um, it's not that black and white. Generally, we say in terms of detail, you may want to go into detail for roles for about 10 years back, but we still, you know, want to list those earlier roles as well. So you can either just list them under a separate section called earlier career or something like that, or you can list them with maybe a one or two line summary. However, if there's roles from earlier in your career that are really relevant to the one that you're applying for, then feel free to put that detail in. Um, you know, it's, it's helpful for an employer to know what your path has been too. It's not only your most recent roles. So I definitely recommend that you at least list those earlier positions and whether you go into detail or not will depend on how relevant those jobs are. Um, so, um, yeah, I hope that that answers your question there. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, now, pushing this upwards a little bit um, for anybody who, who feels that they have, you know, um, quite strong experience or if you have you know, areas that you're proud of, things that you've achieved that you're proud of, 
if you can shift your resume to be more about highlights and achievements um, than just responsibilities, that's a really, really great thing to do. And highlights is or achievements doesn't necessarily mean, you know, like I got an award or I got a promotion um, or something that obvious, you know. Highlights can be um, anything from like training other, other people um, in your company to being a part of a really big project, um, things that you did to help improve, um, you know, the work that was being done in your company. So basically getting a little bit more specific um, to show how you contributed to that company, not just what you did on a day-to-day, -day, but how did you help improve things? If you got a promotion or award, fantastic, please include it as well. But it's also about um, other areas. As I said, did you train somebody? Did you help to improve a process um, where you were part of something that was really big? Did you help resolve a problem with a customer that was really upset? You know, did you resolve disputes or did you deal with complaints? And, you know, there's a amount of different things and everybody has highlights. Everybody has them. So if you're sitting there going, oh, no, I don't have any of those. Everybody does. It's just a matter of, thinking about them, working them out and putting them putting them down into words. So <clears throat> I've popped in here, you know, some examples um, of, you know, if you've ever had, if you've ever been a manager or had people, you know, if you were a leader to anybody, you don't have to be an official leader, but if you were ever mentoring somebody or anything like that, it's a great thing to put in as well. So I've popped in some examples here that you guys can have a look at a little bit later, um, but that's something to keep in mind. So I would recommend maybe starting with your responsibilities. Um, and as you write those responsibilities, you may have some of those highlights pop out to you, you know. Um, you know, maybe you worked in a really, really fast-paced um, environment. You know, you were dealing with 100 phone calls coming in every day. Things like that are really great to, to include as well. Um, a question here. If a future employer asks you why you are applying for this job, what is a good answer? That's a great question <laughs> and it will, it's difficult to answer without knowing the specifics of your circumstances. So it will vary so much, but I always recommend um, being, being upfront is quite helpful. Tell them why you're applying for the job. There's a reason that you've applied for this job, whether, you know, it's, if it's personal reasons and you don't want to um, disclose that, that's up to you as well. But, Think about why you're interested in the job um, and actually communicate that, you know. Oh, I think I would do um, I think I would do really well in this position. I want to be a part of a team. I want to do something. Uh, I want to be a part of um, a successful organisation. I want to get back into the workforce, you know. Um, my career commenced in 1976. Judgments, ageism can be a reaction. Absolutely. So there is some... Um, strategies around ageism. I actually did a post on this the other day because it is such a common thing. When it comes to ageism, what we want with your with your resume and cover letter is to get that interview because once they interact with you and meet with you, it's a whole other um, element, right? They're feeling your energy. They're getting to know you. They're hearing you speak. Um, so ageism becomes less of a concern at that stage it's about getting through to that interview stage so what I recommend if you're concerned about that with your resume we don't want to mislead or misrepresent in any any information but what I would recommend is for those earlier career roles remove the dates so it's a little bit sneaky but it's effective and um, it's to get you to that interview point. And as I said, you haven't misled anybody. So when you go into the interview, you know, they're not going to be, um, you know, <laughs> pissed off about it or anything like that. Um, you haven't misled. You've listed all those earlier roles, but you just leave the dates out. Um, things like qualifications um, that, you know, if they're a really long time ago, exclude the dates. But don't exclude your qualifications, you know, don't undersell yourself either, which is why I don't say or remove the earlier roles or remove your early qualifications, because then you're underselling your skill set. Keep them in, just exclude the dates there, okay?
Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I can give you an example, guys. I know some of you had talked to Sharda um, beforehand as well. So Sharda was um, upwards of 70 years old re-entering the workforce. Um, and this was one of her concerns as well. But we found a way by removing those earlier dates and focusing on the skills profile, um, she got that interview and she got the role, you know. Um, so it doesn't have to be a barrier. Um, there will always be some element of that ageism or discrimination with some people, you know. It, it's you, you can't control everybody. You can control what you do. So um, the, other, the other side of it is if you put your dates in, um, you know, if somebody's, or you go to an interview and you feel like there's there's that ageism factor, then it's it's not the place for you. It's not it's not the job for you. It's not the environment for you. Um, you know, but yeah, remove those dates. Remove those dates. It helps. <laughs> um and yeah, once you get to the interview stage, then that's another story. All right. Um, so jumping back in here, so I've just listed here some um active words, action verbs for you here. Um, no worries, right? Um, I've listed some action verbs for you here that you can use to kind of start off those sentence, those bullet points in your experience. So have a look at those and um, see what might fit the responsibilities that you have and, you know, um, work those in there. So a good starting point for, for those bullet points. All right. Um, now, so brushing over those, you know, additional resume sections. Um, so as I said, you can list your earlier career in a separate section, your education, remove the dates if they're not recent. If you have recent courses and things like that that you've done, um, uh, yes, you, you're definitely getting these slides. Um, <clears throat> um, all right. Um, so... If you have done any recent courses and things like that, and it doesn't have to be an official qualification um, or an official certificate, even if you've done, you know, little online workshops or online online courses and things like that, please list them. Please list them. It's really helpful um, to show that you're still wanting to learn and you're wanting to develop no matter what, what your age is. You know, you're still engaged. You're still... Um, um, involved and invested so um, your qualifications don't have to be just those official you know and official qualifications that you have um, <clears throat> um, any licenses and tickets um, volunteer experience and community involvement is great especially if you've been out of the workforce for a little while and if you have done any volunteer work it's a great thing to work in there as well um, <clears throat> We can do, um, you know, any awards and things like that that you've, you've received. If you've spoken, if you've, you know, spoken anywhere, whether it be a volunteer thing or not. Um, and for references, generally, um, rule of thumb is not to include those details directly in your resume. Um, you can if you like. But if you don't, you put a note in there that says, I have references available, just so that when an employer requests them, you can call that person your reference and say, hey, just a heads up, you might get a call from, from this company. So people give better references when they have a little bit of warning. Um, so that's really the main reason for not putting those details in. But if you're comfortable too, you can you can put those details in too. Um, <clears throat> all right. Targeting a specific role. So when you have put your resume together, it's, it's really quite simple to tweak it for the different jobs. So the main thing that you want to do is look at those. Um, I'll, I'll come back to your question in a minute, Kerner. Um, So um, look through that job posting. Look for those words, the skills, the requirements that they're looking for. You know, if they say things like you need to be a great relationship builder or you need to have experience in this software program or you need to have these particular skills, if you have those skills, these are the ones that you want to highlight in your skills summary um, or your skills sections on page one. So um, focus on those skills that are most relevant to that job that you're applying for. And then, you know, especially if you're going for different types of roles, if you're focused on, say, administration, it may not change so much between the different administration roles that you apply for. But if you're looking at a variety of jobs, you may want to tweak this skills set 
you know, um, to align with what that job wants. If you have that skill set, again, we don't want to falsify anything, um, but you don't want to undersell yourself either. So you might want to just, you, it might just be a matter of reordering those skills. Um, but, um, and the other thing is where in that professional summary, where you've summarized your skills, you want to focus on those skills that are in that job ad as well. Okay. Um, so, yeah, um, Kerner had asked, what if you're unable to get references? And Sharon has said, depending on the circumstances. Um, so I'll just throw in here that keep in mind, if you don't have any professional references, you may like to use a personal reference as well. Um, so, you know, a, a character reference. So somebody that you've known for a really long time that isn't family preferably um, is, an, is an option there. But I'll, I'll leave that for Sharon um, to help you guys out with afterwards. Does anyone want to ask any questions about domains? Anything at all? Because we're going to jump into the cover letter next. So um, if anyone has any questions on resumes, please shoot them my way. <clears throat> How do we address gaps? Fantastic question. Or, so um, depending on the circumstances, it will vary, again, as usual, but I can give you kind of some idea. So gaps are not as much of a concern as they used to be, especially after the COVID period. A lot of people have gaps um, in their resume. It is a matter of addressing them. So you're on the, on the right track that they do need to be addressed rather than leaving those um, years blank because then that leaves room for the person to make up their own assumptions or stories oh why didn't she work for that long I wonder what happened I wonder you know um um why did she leave that that job you know did she get fired or what happened or what went on um make up their maybe she's um unwell or maybe you know make up whatever they whatever their brain makes up for them so the best thing to do is directly address those gaps how you address it is up to you so, you know, people have gaps for oh, a whole heap of reasons, you know, raising family, um, medical issues, deciding to have a career break, you know, whatever it is. So how much you want to disclose is up to you. You can simply put a note in there that says career break, personal commitments, and have the dates of those gaps. That's the kind of most simple way to address it if you don't want to disclose other information. Um Yes, you can put a line in the um you can put a line in the CV. So if we go back to here in this career snapshot, you can put in there career break, personal commitments, and the dates there. Um Got it. you can put it, yes, you can put it in the experience section as well. So just a little note, wherever, wherever it fits in in the chronology, in the order, um, just stick a note in there that says career break, personal commitments. Um, if you did things like maybe you were studying or maybe you were, you know, you can say raising a family, if you were traveling, um, I will say though, also that if you did any kind of activity in that period, like I said before, volunteer activities, you were involved in, um, I don't know, your kids or your grandkids schools or any, any kind of activity within the community you can put that in there as well. So you can have in their career break and just say, you know, um, participated in this or that volunteer exercise or, you know, focused on my well-being. You know, so however, however you however much information you want to disclose is up to you. You don't have to, and you're not obligated to ex, ex, um, disclose any detail. But it is important to at least just put a note in there that says career break personal commitments or, or whatever it may be and have those dates in there. And so Kerner has just said it was more looking after older and sick family members. And absolutely, and this is a very common one, and, you know, um, I've taken a career break myself for that reason as well. Um, so, again, like if you're applying for aged care, if you're looking at aged care, this is something you might want to include and say that you were caring because you – this is the thing you learn so much from your personal experiences, not only from your work experience. So 
So if you have been doing things in that period that you feel are valuable, include those in there as well. It says a lot about you. Um, do you put the carer stuff in? If you're, again, it depends how relevant it is. So if you're applying for a role in aged care or personal care or um, some kind of care role, or if, even in the community sector, um, community services, I would recommend that, yes, you include that if you're comfortable to disclose that personal information about yourself, then yes, it is absolutely very beneficial. So you can put things in there like, I, you know, monitored medications, I provided personal care and hygiene to my family members, um, you know, I helped them engage in social activities, things like that, which would be highly relevant if you're applying for a role in aged care or personal care or something like that. Absolutely, if you're comfortable to. Um, I hope I've answered your questions, guys. Does anyone have any other other resume questions at all? Anything at all? We've got a bit of time, so, you know, throw it my way. If you're not into aged care, um, if you're not looking for an aged care role, then you may not need to you may not need to you know detail um what your responsibilities were in that time but you can just put in there um you know career break caring for unwell family members or if you're not comfortable to again just career break personal commitments so just a very brief um you know explanation for that gap very brief just one line um if if it's not you know if you're not looking at aged care or something like that no problem, Kona. <clears throat> How to overcome judgment regarding not having degrees. Um, great question, Ray. So um, this is such a such a common thing. It really is because you know qualifications, the requirements for qualifications has become so prevalent now, but it wasn't previously, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. Um, so it is such a, a common thing, um, that, that common barrier or problem that people face. This is a part of the reason why we have this skill set. So you will notice that, you know, I haven't got education anywhere on page one. Um, it may be, you know, for somebody, for example, who's a graduate, you would put that education on page one because that's important for them. They're, you know, going into their first job. But at this stage of your, of your working, um, career or your working life I don't we don't place emphasis on the education we emphasize the skill set and simply doing that by focusing on your skill set on page one it removes the focus it detracts the focus away from a lack of degrees or a lack of qualifications um, and a lot of the time experience and skill set does take precedence over qualifications if it's pitched strongly in us you know which is why we do this Focus on your skills because, um, you know, it will vary. You know, some employers will absolutely require that qualification if it's in within their policies. Um, but a lot of the time, experience trumps qualifications as well. So we want to sell your skill set really strongly, and that will make a lack of qualifications less of an issue. Um, I hope that helps. No problem, Ray. Um, I will say that if a if a, Ray, if there is a job that has a qualification requirement in the job description, um, then it is important to directly address that in calendar, which we can talk about a bit later. But to just say, although I don't have this qualification, I do have this, 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 and this skills and experience because the, we want the employer to know that you have looked at the role, you've considered their requirements. You're not just brushing over it. Um, but yeah, in terms of the resume, we focus on the skill set. <clears throat> Perfect. Any other questions, guys? Feel free to unmute yourself if you like or pop it in the chat. <clears throat> Otherwise, we will move on to the cover letters section. All right. Cool. 
looks like there aren't any other questions at this point. If you think of any, please let me know. Um, but let's have a look at cover letters now. Um, <clears throat> so cover letter is, um, I generally recommend, you know, that's a question that I get all the time is, do I really need a cover letter? Um, someone's just popped another question here. What if family care is ongoing? Um, that's okay. You don't have to, again, you don't have to disclose that in, in, in your resume if you don't want to, Kona. Um, as long as you're available for that role and, and the hours that that role requires, then that's not an issue. So you can say, you know, um, career break, caring for family until present, you know, um, 2020 till present, if you like. Um, and then, you know, it, it's not it's not an issue. You're applying for the role, you're available for the hours, that's all good. All right. Um, so, yes. Um, should I include, do I have to include a cover letter? If there's an opportunity, if there's the option to upload a cover letter or include a cover letter, it is a great thing to include because it's just an extra um, opportunity to, to sell yourself basically. Um, you know, and again, traditionally, we usually have our cover letters be like a very brief, you know, I'm interested in the role, here's my resume. Um, but there is a lot of opportunity with a well-written cover letter to, to make yourself stand out further from the candidate. So it can be, you know, if your recruiter's got two people who are quite similar, the cover letter can be the factor that makes that difference. Um, so we'll talk about what the purpose of a cover letter is, which is basically to um, answer these two questions for the, for the person reading it. Why are you the person for the role and why are you the person for that company? Um, so cover letter is a little bit more of a personal document, personal tone than the resume, which is you know, a little bit more formal. Cover letter is like the first impression they're going to have of you as a person, you know, how you communicate and, and what you're like. Um, so you can, you know, make that connection with the person reading it. So you want to show a little bit of your character. It doesn't have to be such a formal document. Um, you can be a little bit more conversational um, um, or casual in the way that you present your cover letter. <clears throat> so the cover letter gives you an opportunity to talk about your whole career together, you know, Resume is very much job by job by job. Um, in your cover letter, you can talk about your whole career path. You can address that um, gap as well if you like. You know, throughout my career, I've worked in um, admin roles. I've worked in service roles. I had a career break to care for my family, and now I am looking to re-enter the workforce um, for this, this, and this reason. Um, so you can talk about your career as a whole, which you can't do so much in, in the resume. And as I said before, show your character and personality. If you're a really bubbly person, bring that across in the cover letter, you know. If you're a little bit more reserved and calculated, bring that across in the cover letter. Um, you know, show them what you're like. So when you come in for an interview, you're, you're what they were expecting, basically, from your cover letter. Um, <clears throat> so we want it to be, to add some new information. We don't want it to be just you know, regurgitating, repeating everything that's in the resume. I was at this company for this many years and so-and-so. Um, we don't want it to be just very generic. Um, you know, if you can edit, tailor, tweak it for the different jobs and different companies, it makes a huge difference because they can tell when it's, you know, just a very general cover letter. Um, so we want to try and be a little bit more specific um, to the job that you're applying for. Um, and add some new information for them. Add something new about yourself that's not in the resume. Um, as I said, about your character. Tell them about yourself, something that's not in the resume. Add some new information for them, another angle, another perspective. <clears throat> um, so I put out, I'll put here just a couple of examples again just to show you what a cover letter looks like. Um, so we'll talk about the formatting again is very similar to the resume so simple text-based formatting the same header that you had on the resume um, <clears throat> include a date um, 
include the job title that you're applying for and the company um, and then just a, you know, dear hiring manager, um, if there's a person, if there's a contact number, a name on the job, you can put their name in. Um, I put this here because you don't need to put in, you know, the company's full address and things like that anymore. Um, that was more, you know, when you're submitting paper applications. So just the job title and the company name. And this is intentional. It takes just a minute to do, but it shows them that you have written this cover letter for that role, you know. Oh, look, it's, she's written this for this position. It's not just another generic cover letter. So it just, we want to give the perception that you're really keen on this position and this company, um, even if it's not particularly the case and you are applying for other roles, you still want them to um, feel your interest in the, in the role um, because that's very attractive um, for, for them. Um, and... I generally say about three three to five par paragraphs, short paragraphs is plenty. Um, you know, half a page to three quarters of a page. Um, so that's, you know, the basic layout. And then we want a signature at the bottom. So just thank you and, and your name. Um, so I've put here, you know, your job title, your company name, the details, the target title, which is optional and the greeting. Um, that we just talked about, um, an introduction, which is very similar to the introduction of your resume, um, but we want to refer, refer to the job and the company that you're applying for. So I think I would do really well as an administration officer with XYZ company. Again, just giving that perception that you've paid attention, you've written this for this role, and um, you're very interested in this position. So reference that job and the company that you're applying for in that summary. So we have that career in a nutshell, first sentence, um, focus on a couple of the, the key skills that you have that are relevant. So, you know, this one's got customer inquiries, record keeping, resolving complaints, and then express, explicitly state your interest in that role and company. That's your introduction. Um, we work into, then we've got uh, a paragraph one, paragraph two, and a conclusion. I'll go into a little bit more detail in those. Um, and at the end, we want a thanks. Thank you for, for considering me. Thank you for me reading my application. A call to action, which basically says, I would like an interview. You know, you're calling them to, to take action. Um, I'd, I'd love to discuss this with you. Um, I, I'd love to have an interview with you at your convenience. Um, and then your sign off and your name, kind regards, your sincerely, whatever feels comfortable for you. Um, all right. Um, I've popped in here, again, some links um, for cover letter templates and, and Microsoft Word has a whole heap um, as well. So you'll get these in the slides afterwards. Um, so we've talked about the introduction already. So um, just to reiterate, you identify the position that you're looking for, summarize why you'd be a good fit and basically say, I'm interested in this position, communicate that interest. Because this is what shows them that you've looked at the job, you're familiar with the job, and you're interested in the job. Um, so that's for the intro. Looking at um, the, the body paragraphs, so we go into a little bit more detail. So if there are any qualifications um, required for that role, um, you want to highlight these here. Um, you know, I meet so, so, and so criteria for your job, basically. It would be in your resume too, but if they have specifically requested certain qualifications or certain criteria, these paragraphs are where you want to directly address them. Again, showing that you've paid attention to the job and, and what they're looking for. So any relevant skills, education, experience, um, stick these in here and customise to the job. So kind of use, use the language in the job. It's... Um, Again, a little bit of a sneaky or tricky thing to do, but it really works. So use the skills that they've required in that job ad. If you have those skills, take those phrases and put them into your cover letter as well. Um, you know, because you can say things in so many ways. You can say, you know, I'm a people person or I'm great at building relationships or, um, you know, I'm, I'm great with stakeholder liaison, you know, which they're all practically very similar, use the terminology that's in the job ad. You know, so if they've used relationship building, say, 
um, you know, I'm comfortable with relationship building. I've done this across my whole career. I've done this in so, so and so role. Um, so these two paragraphs are where we want to focus on what's in that job ad and what are they asking for in that job ad. Um, and yeah, obviously your transferable skills. So whatever skills that you do have that are relevant. Um, and um, a compelling closing. So we want to reiterate your unique value proposition or reiterate what's in that summary of your resume. So I really think I will be a good fit for this role because of this, this, and this reason. Very clear kind of pitch. You know, I have the experience, I have the right attitude, and um, I'm at um, the right stage of, of my, my working career. Um, and this is why I'm the right person for your organisation. So that little kind of final push, final pitch to them. Um, and then the thanks and, and the call to action at the end. Thanks for considering my application. I'd love to have an interview. Um, <clears throat> targeting a specific role, as I was saying before, we've talked about these already, but I'm really reiterating here. Um, so we want to directly reference the position and the organisation. Um, refer to the company, um, you know, do a bit of a Google search, look at the values of the company. Um, this is kind of really great if you're looking in the community services sector um, or some of those more, you know, altruistic sectors. Um, if you look at the company values and see what resonates with you, and use those, you know, my values are very aligned with the company values, caring about community, being committed to service or whatever it may be and work those in. Um, addressing the specific criteria from the job and explicitly stating why you've applied for the job and why you're the person for the job. All right. Um, <clears throat> any questions, guys? There's a lot more that I can show you as well because we do have quite a bit of time here. So I can um, show you some, some other things, resources and things that you can use on Google. But this is a great time, guys, if you have any specific, you know, circumstances, you're not sure what to do, you're not sure what kind of skills you should highlight, um, this is the perfect time. Chat to me, tell me about it and, and um, you know, tell me about what um, you're worried about, if there's anything you're worried about, about your resume or your cover letter, um, anything you're concerned about. Um, putting together, you're not sure what to write here or you're not sure what to write there, this is a great time for it. Chat to me, tell me about it, and, and I'll see how I can help. Hmm. How important is your LinkedIn profile? Should it be the same as what's on your CV? Um. You know, LinkedIn, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of LinkedIn just because I, it's basically where I've built my whole business on. And I did use it in my career beforehand, before I was a business owner. Um, I, I worked in, in a career for 10 years as well. So I use LinkedIn a lot. It is very powerful. Um, I will say it is very powerful for your job search, um, especially if you're in kind of a, a role that, does require a lot of qualifications and things like that or a career that does require a lot of qualifications it is it is a very powerful platform for job searching having said that it's not critical um you know recruiters do kind of jump on and do a bit of cyber stalking on linkedin <laughs> in some cases um have a have a look at your profile and things like that um it has a lot of tools that are really powerful for a job search. It has its own job board. You can reach out to companies and you can reach out to recruiters and directly send them messages and share your resume and things like that. So if you have an interest in it and um, you want to, it's very powerful, but it is not critical. Um, it's not really the same as what's on your CV because LinkedIn is a, it's a professional network, but it's personal as well. Um, so it's a person-to-person -person interaction kind of platform. So it's written in first person, you know, I this, I that. And you don't want to disclose every bit of detail of your career on LinkedIn. It's a public platform on the internet. Um, and you want to leave a bit of mystery there. So if somebody's interested, they're going to reach out and connect with you and talk to you. That's what the purpose of your LinkedIn profile really is. So um, similar to your CV, but not exactly, you know, copy-pasted. 
Um, okay. Um, there is an experienced job section on LinkedIn. I filled it in with my CV details and I found out I had two profiles. Recruiters are looking at it though. So should I be regularly posting it, posting on it the way I do on Facebook, but with a career focus? Um, so I definitely check out those two profiles that you have and maybe cut it down to one. Um, it's great that recruiters are looking at your profile too. That's fantastic. And, you know, you can see who's looking at your profile, reach out to them and connect and say, hey, I saw you looked at my profile. Can I ask, you know, what interested you? Um, yes, if you have capacity and if you're interested, absolutely post on LinkedIn in, with a career focus. So you can do things like, if you have thoughts to share about something uh, aligned with your career, create your own post. You can share somebody else's post and put your thoughts to it. You can share articles that you find interesting. Um, but that activity um, really boosts your visibility on LinkedIn as well. Um, you come up in searches more. Your visibility is increased as well. Are there any? Is there any other platforms that are career-based or any other sites that we should be on or looking at? Um, so, Sharon, I don't know if you might want to jump in here. LinkedIn is the big one that I'm aware of. You you can create profiles on things like Seek and Indeed as well. Sharon, do you have any other, other thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I think, look, um, again, um, yes, LinkedIn, and but as, as Salam just said, Seek, um, Indeed, there's a lot of, if you're looking to work in a not-for-profit, there's a lot of not-for-profit websites as well but um, again when we get down to this nitty-gritty I can discuss that with each of you in more detail um, because you know it's going to be different for everybody and um, the great stuff that Salam is, is um, presenting to you here is kind of your framework and your um, format and then when we talk we can go into much more detail about what's suitable for you because it depends on what you're looking for as well. So I will be I will be trying to book it or well I will be wanting to book everybody in on Monday on by phone to have a one on one with me. So if I don't have your phone number, um, can you please email it to me? Although I think I have everyone's email. Anyway, that that's for later. We can take that offline. But for but for now, yes, we can. Um, I'll let Salam continue. Continue. All right. Um. <clears throat> If anyone else have any questions, pop them in as well. I might just quickly show you guys um, where to find those templates on Word. Um, just in case you are not sure. Um, so just thinking of other, other tools and things that I can do with you. Give me one second. Okay, so just sharing my screen here because I've shared the same screen. Um, bear with me. Oh. Um, so I've just popped up Microsoft Word here. Um, <clears throat> So when you open Microsoft Word, depending on the version you have, it might be a little bit different, but there's all these templates that pop up. If you go to more templates and just search for ATS resume, and it'll pop up a heap um, of appropriate ones. If you search for ATS cover letter, you'll get some as well, um, or just resume or just cover letter. So there's a whole heap of templates there, um, you know, you can just pop one open and start filling in your details there. Um, <clears throat> that's not the ideal one that I chose there. Um, in terms of um, other tools that I, I can share with you, I just wanted to, to show you guys, um, if you're not sure about your skills, you know, I know that a lot of people have, have trouble um, picking out what their skills are. Um, so um, especially transferable skills as well. So if you, for example, have been in administration for a really long time, if you jump in and do a bit of a Google search 
and type in um, administrative officer capabilities, for example. It will give you some ideas. These are responsibilities, but if you go into to seek um, or any of those couple of, of top ones that pop up, um, it'll spit out a whole heap of skills and capabilities that are relevant. And this is especially helpful if you're looking at a job that you, you don't have experience in. Um, then, you know, for example, if you're looking at aged care um, um, and you don't have experience in aged care, you can look up, you know, aged care capabilities and it will give you an idea of what the skill sets are for that kind of role. And then you can pick out the ones that you do have and highlight those. Um, <clears throat> So if you're having trouble kind of working out what skills you want to stick on that page one, um, it's, a, it's a great help um, to do that little bit of a Google search. Um, Michelle has asked, how do you access free LinkedIn learning? Um, that's a great question. I'll pop up my LinkedIn and give me one moment. And it's a little slow. <clears throat> um. I think I'm going to have to leave that one to Sharon for later because I've got a business profile, so it looks a little different. Yeah. But it says, um, you know, yeah. Sorry, that's okay. I was just going to say I've had a quick look up. It looks like you can do it with a state library membership. So let, let's take that offline and I can answer. I can look into that and answer that another time. Thanks, Alan. Thank yeah. you. No worries. Um, okay. No worries, Michelle. <clears throat> Sharon, is there anything that you think, um, anything else that you think I can share that will be valuable um, for everybody? Um, no, look, I think that's amazing. I, you know, the stuff you've done is really structured. I think it's very clear. Um, you know, can't thank you enough for doing this. It's very valuable and, and giving you valuable time. I mean, the framework you've given and the fact that um, you've shown shown us where the templates are, um, you know, you've got quite a lot of detail. So, and I mean, unless anybody else has any more questions, I, I would say um, that was a really great session. And um, for, for, for those of you listening, don't be too overwhelmed by all the information because it is just the first step. And that is what I'm here for is to help you with all that stuff. Does anybody have any other um questions Gator I can talk about the video CV another time I think yeah no other questions okay well okay so I'd like to formally thank you Salem that was great um you know we all appreciate getting the value of your expertise and um yeah look forward to getting stuck into it Thank you so much and thanks guys and oh, I just want to quickly say because I, I, I really don't want to overwhelm anybody um, um, so I just want to say that I'm really doing this because it it can make such a difference for you guys and um, you know if we don't um, kind of sell ourselves nobody's going to do it for you and I know that ageism is such a big thing and such a big concern and um, I completely understand the reason for it as well and it's part of the reasons that I wanted to present those resumes in the way that I did. So to focus on your skills and you all have skills, it doesn't matter how much work experience you have or what type of work experience you have. You know, I've been a mum for two years and I, I think I've learned more skills being a mum for two years than I did in 14 years of working <laughs> Um, you know, your personal life gives you so much um, skills as well. So, you know, it's just a matter of getting those into words and I, the, the roles are out there for you and I want you to get the jobs that you deserve. 
So mm. um, I'm sure that you will have amazing um, ongoing support from, from Sharon as well. So um, I'll get these slides out to you and the session recording so that you can watch it back if you'd like. Um, and yeah, I hope I hope I've, I've helped a little bit here. But thanks so much for joining for joining us. I've really enjoyed it. Thanks, guys. Can I can I just add to that, Salam? You know about the ageism. I agree, but I think every I do think every generation has its own issues. So, you know, young young people get told they're too young, they don't have enough experience. Mothers get told, you know, well, you've got family commitments. How do we know you're going to give commitments to the job? Um, for men, for men, they're pigeonholed into certain kind of, you know, societal expectations and don't feel that they can step out of those sometimes. Um, you know, I think I think we all suffer from some kind of ism at, at every stage. And I think it's really important not to let that define us and not to not to keep telling ourselves, oh, yes, it's ages, it's ages, because it's not going to change anything. The thing that will change it is us for not even to worry about it and just to go out there and do exactly what Salem says, get the jobs that we deserve. Yeah. So well said, absolutely. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank well, you. thank you. Thank you again, and I'll be in touch with everybody shortly. Okay, have a good day. Thank you, and you. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.